Hi, welcome. I'm glad you're joining me again today where I want to share and encourage your heart in the gospel of Jesus Christ and everything that he's done freely for you. And we're continuing on this series that I began just last week on sowing and reaping. And just to recap, what we talked about last week was that of course, everything is freely given in Jesus Christ. Everything. Uh, all your needs, your righteousness, your justification before God, the um, provision that you would need to have to support others in the kingdom of God, to be a blessing to them, that is also provided by God. But specifically, last week, we were emphasizing the fact that everything is freely given to you in Christ, period. Everything. And I'm going to continue on for at least a, several more weeks on this topic so we can clearly elaborate on what is this concept of sowing and reaping that's so popular in Christian circles. We, you can read it, not in just Christian circles, but I mean, it's in the Bible. It's in the New Testament. So let's rightly divide, rightly understand what the Word is saying and not twist it to apply to something that it's not being applied to in context. And so I'm going to be going to several verses that are commonly referred to on, in, in sowing and reaping, and we'll be talking about what's being discussed, what's being taught. And I believe it will really encourage your heart to uh, in, get established even more so that God is for you and He is not withholding anything from you based on what you do. Your provision, the blessing of the Lord is upon you, not based on what you do for God, but what God has done for you completely in Jesus Christ. It's finished, as Jesus said, and there's nothing that you have to, you must do to earn God's good opinion, His favor, His blessing in your life. <clears throat> Excuse me. And just to... Um, I, I don't, I don't, of course, know everybody who's out there listening. So a lot of times people apply this principle of sowing and reaping in order to increase in riches. And I just want to read this verse here that Jesus spoke in Luke twelve fifteen. He said to them, take heed and beware of covetousness for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. So when we start twisting the scriptures and making them apply to some kind of formula that we think we have to do in order to increase in our substance, or you could say riches, because of a covetousness, or you could say a greedy mentality that we have, that will not get you the fulfilled life that you really are seeking for. You know, Jesus said right there, your life, the Zoe God kind of life, can't be purchased with money, simply put. And we talked about that in the last lesson. So be encouraged that even if you think you... And God, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying God's not going to meet your needs. I'm not saying that by any means. But I'm saying if you want to um, increase in riches just for the sake of getting to some kind of vague point in your life that you think you'll be satisfied if you get to that kind of wealth, um, according to what Jesus said right here, you will not experience that fulfillment that you're looking for because fulfillment or life because life is the fulfillment that we can experience by having God live in us and that does not come 
by increasing in riches. It really doesn't. So I just want to encourage you in that and just maybe you have to make a course correction in your Christian walk and and come to your real you know realize that if I want to get more and more wealth just for the sake of getting more and more wealth to satisfy some kind of perceived lack I have in my heart you know a, a sense of dissatisfaction just know that that will not satisfy that dissatisfaction that you're experiencing the only thing that will quench or satisfy that thirst I guess you could say the thirst for completeness a sense of wholeness is knowing how much God loves you and that sounds so simple but it's so true it's so true and just stick around and listen some more and see what all is being said in these verses and I really think it will encourage you so let's go to one uh, section of the Bible where it's Paul was talking about sowing and reaping and let's see what he's talking about here in 1 Corinthians 9 go to verse verse 9 he says for it is written in the law of Moses you, you shall not muzzle an ox when it treads out the grain is it for oxen that God is concerned well of course not that's his point here does he not certainly speak for our sake it was written for our sake because the plowman should plow in hope and the thresher thresh in hope of sharing in the crop if we have sown spiritual things among you is it too much if we reap material things from you if others share this rightful claim on you do not we rather than put an obstacle I'm sorry do we not even more nevertheless we have not made use of this right but we endure anything rather than put an obstacle in the way of the gospel of Christ so he's simply saying here this sowing and reaping that's being mentioned that Paul as an apostle of the gospel to these people in the Corinthian church had diligently and with much time spent training and raising up these people in Christ and he's just simply saying that I've sown this, these spiritual things into your life that you may grow in Christ and is it unreasonable for me to expect material goods in return you know I mean he had to make his livelihood preaching the gospel and fortunately for Paul he actually had uh, his own personal tent making business so he was not um, he was not limited to the provision that he would get from the churches and that's exactly what he said right here at the end that he hasn't for the sake of the gospel because the gospel is all about what God has freely given you and Paul didn't want to come across as demanding I mean he definitely would never demand material recompense for his ministry but he was saying just just so it doesn't even appear that he was requiring um, offerings for his ministry he said I didn't even make use of this right to receive from you for the sake of the gospel because the gospel is all about like I said everything that God has freely given you so if Paul comes across as oh you better give or else or else God's not gonna bless you well then he's defeating his whole focus and effort to win these people to Christ by the wonderful message of what God gives freely in Jesus Christ and he didn't want to risk coming across that way as demanding something in return for his ministry efforts to that church and to other churches too so but the point also is is that for ministers out there and please I am not saying this um, 
you know, and self-serving way. You know, I'm not trying to get your finances by any means. <laughs> I want to just get us established in what the word really is all about on this topic of sowing and reaping. I'm just reading the Bible <laughs> and explaining the Bible. I'm not trying to, um, you know, do this with ulterior motives. But here he's saying that it actually is reasonable for a minister to expect to be recompensed for his ministry to people as he as he raises the people up in the ministry of the gospel now if you're a minister that teaches the law or even a mixture of the gospel and the law um, you are not due really any kind of recompense in my opinion because you are actually killing the people with the ministry of the law, as it says in 2 Corinthians 3. You know, you are not doing the people any good. You are not raising them up to establish them in the love of Jesus Christ. You are, with the law, you are actually bringing a division between God and the people. And that is, you are not due any kind of recompense. But, if you are preaching the gospel, it's very reasonable, even as Paul said here, to reap material things in return. Of course, not to abuse those that quote-unquote right, as he says here. You know, that's wrong too. But the point is made that it's not unreasonable to support ministers that preach the gospel by any means. That is not wrong by any means. So... That's one explanation for reaping right there. It's just a simple, uh, you could say, bartering. You know, you, you, the minister sows spiritual truths and they, and as the people reap spiritual health and wholeness in God, they likewise recompense the minister back so that he can reap material things from them. Pretty simple, straightforward, isn't it? And just to reiterate again from the last lesson, remember that everything is freely given by God to all mankind, not just the special Christians. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's no, and there's no special Christians. We are all priceless treasures to God, whether or not you believe in Jesus Christ or not yet. Amen. Every person is precious to God, and that's why he sent his son Jesus to rescue us and make a perfect payment for us so that we can forever live in a liberating relationship with him freely. Not based on anything, no, no obligation whatsoever to him with our, in our behavior to him. We don't have to quote unquote sow into the kingdom to receive gifts. That's the key word, gifts that he's giving every person freely, right? It's very logical. If he's giving everything freely, then why are people, scratching your head, why do people think they have to sow then to receive something from him? That's just, it's illogical, really. And speaking of that, in 1 Corinthians 12, 11, it says, but, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. And it's speaking of his gifts. So God gives gifts as he wills, not according to what you do. There's nothing that you have to do to, uh, I guess you could say, if you thought God was a, um, what do you call it, a slot machine, <laughs> where you just put in some coins and you say, okay, now I'm going to hit the jackpot. And you pull the arm and you expect something out. Now, God that is not moved by what you do. He is so generous, so giving. He just gives gifts out freely not based on anything you do. And that's exactly also what Romans eleven twenty nine 29 says. It says, For the gifts 
and the calling of God are irrevocable. They are freely given, irrevocable. There's nothing you can do to revoke the free gifts that God gives you. Amen. And that specifically, just to be correct, that specifically is speaking of the ministry gifts that he gives the body of Christ. But as with all his gifts, they are freely given, is my point. And so, let's just follow up in another section here where Paul is correcting carnal Christians in the Corinthian church. Again, he's saying, you know, the, the people were saying, well, I'm of Apollos and I'm of Paul. And, you know, they were being very carnal. And so, and so in chapter 3, verse 6, he says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, nor he, uh, I'm sorry, but God who gives the increase. So I'm going to read it again. Verse 7. So then neither is he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. So like I was saying, people think, well, if I just do this or I sow into the kingdom, quote unquote, then I'm going to receive something from God. I'm going to receive that blessing or that anointing or that gift, whatever it may be. And it says right here that God just gives the increase, period. You want your sowing, your watering has nothing to do with it. God just gives increase. <laughs> it has nothing to do with you. Uh, people just think it's all about them, but it's not. It's about Jesus. It's about what he's done for you freely. And... I think that I just love that verse because it really just nails it shut really about sowing and reaping. It's not about what you do, what you plant, who waters the seed. You know, it's all about God just gives the increase. And then verse 8, 1 Corinthians 3, 8 says, Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. So some people say, oh, well, see, we're going to get a reward if we labor in the kingdom. Well, let's find out what that reward is. You know, let's see what you're reaping as you are planting and watering. And don't forget, like that first verse I read, God gives the increase, period. So it's not, you aren't twisting God's arm to get the increase, He's giving it to you irregardless. Remember, the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. So what is, let's explain, what is this reward that you are getting according to your quote-unquote labor? And all your labor is, by the way, well, before I go there, let's just go, let's just read the scripture, what it says. <laughs> let's go to Galatians 6. And this is a very popular section about sowing and reaping. Galatians 6, verse 6, says, Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. So this is, sounds just like we read earlier in 1 Corinthians 9, doesn't it? So, we, you know, the person that shares the word is to reasonably expect good things back in return from those he's teaching. Verse 7, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. For if he sows to his flesh, will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit, will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. So it's saying right there, that last verse there, which is very frequently uh, quoted, me included. You know, don't be weary in believing the gospel, the good news, that everything that 
God has done is freely given to you. You know, he, he has come to give you health, to give you prosperity, to give you wholeness and a joy, a sense of completeness that you can only find in him, to give you his righteousness for placing you forever in right standing with him. I mean, all these are gifts. So as you, real, as you hold fast to that truth that it's a gift, that these are gifts, you will see the manifestation of the gospel as fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life and the manifestation of this, these things you are hoping for, that you are expecting God to bring to fruition. Amen. So, but I wanted to go back up to the, those verses 7 and 8 where he's talking about, it says right there, it's so clear. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap what? Corruption. So when you sow to being, and when you when it says there, so in context, Galatians is all about a book. I mean, it's a book that's all about Paul correcting the Galatians who were no longer walking in the teaching of the pure gospel, but they were mixing works, dead works of the flesh, or they were, you could say they are, they were becoming law-minded. They were thinking that if I could just do right, then God would bless me as an example. They were getting into their own efforts and thinking that that plus the gospel would give them right standing with God, would give them the blessing from the Lord. And and so this whole book, I encourage you to read if you haven't read it. It's so good. Galatians is a wonderful book in the Bible. And so when it says that you're sowing to the flesh, it's talking about when you sow to, when you let your mind become, um, you, you get confused and you think, well, I got to relate to God based on what I do and all the good things that I can do for him. That is being after the flesh. That's knowing yourself and your relationship with God according to what you do, not according to what he's done, which would be, that would be after the spirit, knowing what God has done for you freely. That is knowing God by the gospel. Amen. So the outcome of believing inaccurately, believing in the law as your means of right standing with God, that will, you will reap corruption. And man, who wants that? So this is just to reiterate, you know, go back to why we went to this first. We were trying to explain the reward that someone receives for, for their quote unquote labor. Well, this is the reward. You know, if you sow to the flesh, then you reap corruption. And it says there also, he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap eternal life, which makes perfect sense. Because if everything is freely given you, then why do you want to do something externally to get something from God if he's already freely given it to you. It's just a confused mindset that thinks like that. That what you, as you believe in the gospel, which is sowing to the spirit, as I said, then what happens is you start seeing a, um, a manifestation in your, you could say in your personality, in your soul of the joy of the Holy Spirit, the peace, you know, all the fruit of the Holy Spirit that is for free and that manifests as you believe in the correct message. It's so important to, uh, to know what, what are you truly believing in? Because if you're believing correctly, then you will see the manifestation of the fruit of the Spirit, the manifestation of God's provision if you're believing correctly. And that is the reward. That is what you're not to be weary and well-doing, for you will reap 
this reward, this reward of eternal life that you've been given as a gift in Jesus Christ. And it's a really strange mindset, which is a nice way to put it. If you think, if you belittle eternal life with God, I don't care about eternal life. Just give me a new Mercedes. <laughs> you know, it really makes you, you really should stop and wonder, what, am I really thinking correctly? <laughs> because relationship with God should be awesome. Just as they say, off the chain. I mean, it should be, it should just make, you know, it should just sound like wonderful music to you. I mean, it's, it should be everything that floats your boat, as they say, you know, I mean, if we're, if, if God is showing us how we can reap eternal life, then let's follow his direction. And he's saying, so to the spirit, so to the spirit, so the message of Jesus Christ, the good news of what he's done for you freely, and you will reap eternal life in your life. You will experience an abundant life that is in God because God has come to live in you and you'll have a relationship with him that you just can't put a price on. It's priceless. And that is worth reaping, wouldn't you say? Amen. So let's find out what is this, you know, reaping corruption. What is, you know, let's cover the bases here. I've talked about eternal life, just briefly, of course. But if you are sowing to the flesh, you reap corruption. And there's other verses that say similar to that effect. So let's read those too. Go to 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. It says in verse 9, do, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And I just got to read the next verse, of course. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. I just love that you got to really include both of those because that's how we all were before we trusted in Christ. There was no, not one righteous among us, as the Bible says. And what I wanted to emphasize here in this, these verses, and oh my gosh, was quite negative there for a while, wasn't it? Adulterers, homosexuals, drunkards, you know. Ugh. But <laughs> I hate to mention anything negative is my point, you know. But it says here that they would not inherit the kingdom of God. So what does that mean? I mean, that is essentially saying you wouldn't reap the kingdom of God as you would walk in those things. And that's essentially what it's saying. It's not saying you would, because there are, to be totally honest, there are Christians who have trusted in Jesus and yet they have terrible habits. You could say habits that are like these here. God does not relate to you after the flesh. He relates to you who you are in your spirit. And as it says right there in verse 11, you were sanctified. You were justified in his name, not based on what you do, but in his name, Jesus' name. And what he did for you, you were sanctified. So that's an encouragement for any of you who may be experiencing um, oppression such as these things. And... It's not saying, this verse is not saying that you've lost your salvation if you practice those things. What it's saying is that you won't obtain or walk in or receive the things that are freely given you in the kingdom. In other words, you can't be in two places at once. 
You can't, for instance, be on the top of a mountain and yet be soaking in the ocean at the same time. You're either at one place or the other. So you could say you're walking in these works of the flesh, which is what these are, as it says also in Galatians 5, if you want to read it, because it's saying that very similarly in Galatians 5, these verses that I just read here, for reference, if you want to go there also. So you can't have these works of the flesh operate or manifest in your life at the same time, of course, as the fruit of the Spirit. You can't have both at the same time. I mean, that would, it, it, it just doesn't work that way. You either have a, like, like uh, Jesus said that, you know, if the fruit is, if the tree is good, then the fruit is good. You will know a tree by its fruit. You can't have evil fruit and good fruit at the same time. You know, I mean, it just doesn't work that way. And that it's as going back again to what I'm my point, I'm not saying you lose your salvation. The kingdom of God, as it says in Romans fourteen seventeen, is not in eating and in drinking, or you could say in doing things, but it's in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So if you experience you will experience that those things, the fruit of the Spirit, as you believe in the correct message. If you're listening and trusting in the wrong message, then you're, the outcome will be the works of the flesh. It's like if I plant corn seed in the ground, because your heart, your belief system is just like ground. You could say it's just like, <laughs> not implying anything, it's just like dirt. You know, it's going to manifest, your, out of your heart is going to manifest whatever you're planting there. So if you're planting the gospel seed in your heart, in your belief system, then what you're going to reap is eternal life, as we read earlier in Galatians 6. But if you're planting the law-mindedness, you know, righteousness by your works, by your good works, or even your lack of good works, you think God's treating you according to your good works or not. That's being law-minded and that will manifest the works of the flesh, just like some of these things listed here. Ouch. I mean, who wants that, right? So you will either inherit the kingdom of God or you could say reap of the Spirit because it's really the same thing. Or you'll reap the works of the flesh according to whatever message you are trusting in and that's simply put that's what that is talking about there and also sowing and reaping is very, very much to be honest is very focused in our relationships with people I mean just like I started at the very beginning you know, Paul said it's, it's reasonable for me to reap material things from you all if I'm teaching you spiritual things, if I'm sowing spiritual things in your life. So sowing and reaping is very, very um, prevalent, that concept, among people. And let, just as an example, let's go to Luke. This is a very popularly mentioned verse and sowing and reaping and yet it's not applying to God it's applying to people and many people use this as a way to reap things from God and remember from the first lesson if you think you can reap spiritual things from God according to your money what you sow as it said in Acts 8, which is what I, I, please go back and listen to the first message. If you haven't listened to it yet, please go back and listen to it. But when you try and twist God's arm to get something from him, according to, you know, you sowing money or paying money, that's especially wicked in God's eyes. And... So that is, and that's how, that is how a lot of people apply this verse I'm about to share 
And it's not even talking about your relationship with God. It's talking about how we treat one another. Because people are not God. <laughs> we wish they would be perfect like God, but people have strong memories. And if you treat somebody poorly, then it's very possible that they will recompense you and likewise treat you poorly. That's just how people in the natural, I'm not saying people that are living by the abundant love that God has shed abroad in their hearts to be lovely to their own enemies, because we can do that by the Spirit. I mean, that is the supernatural life that we can live. We don't have to be just like all other humans, us Christians. We are called to live a, a God kind of life where we are kind to even our own enemies. But I'm just saying, in the natural, without the help of the Spirit, if you were to treat somebody poorly, it's likely they will also treat you poorly. And that's exactly what it says here in Luke 6. Go to 37. It says, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. This is definitely Old Testament, because you were freely forgiven by Jesus Christ. You know, this is uh, Old Testament mentality. You scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. You know, you treat me nicely, I'll treat you nicely. It's definitely the way of common folk. Even sinners do this, you know? They'll forgive you if you forgive them. <laughs> That's what it's saying here. Give and it will be given to you. That's what it's talking about people. Give to people, be generous to people, and they will give to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. So when you treat people nicely, they will treat you nicely. When you're generous to them, they will be likewise, just according to human nature, generous to you. That's, that's just the way people are wired in the natural. They're law-minded, and that's very law-based. It really is. I mean, it's... You know, and the Bible, it says in the law, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You know, I mean, if you treat somebody poorly, then they're going to expect, a, you know, likewise a similar recompense back from you, you know, or treat you in the same way is what I'm saying. And even in James, it says that. I know that was the New, Old Testament mentality, but if you go to James 3, verse 14... It's talking about our relationships that we have with people. It says, But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. So, that's definitely encouragement to not be self-seeking and you know all me focused and being envious of other people because it says every evil thing will be there ouch you what you are doing is you are sowing to the flesh and this is the kind of re this is what you will reap in the flesh envy strife self-seeking you know i mean don't um it's encouragement to stay gospel-minded. <laughs> you can't correct these things, trust me, by your own strength, by your own willpower. That's being actually trying to correct a spiritual problem by the arm of the flesh. And the arm of the flesh has about this much inkling of strength to take you the long haul. You need a powerful message that will fuel you to be able to be kind, like I said, to your enemies. To forgive even as you were freely forgiven by Him. When you realize how much you've been freely forgiven by Him, 
then you can just effortlessly, very effortlessly forgive other people that don't treat you kindly. That's the spirit-led life that people in the natural just, they really can't understand that. You know, how can you forgive somebody who treats you like this and this and that? Well, it's because I know how much God loves me. So I can be kind to these people that are rude and, um, you know, they steal from me. They might have killed somebody that I know. You know, I mean, I can forgive them freely because I know God has so freely forgiven me. And that's what you're, what you're doing is you're sowing to the Spirit by the things that you are meditating on. You're meditating on the gospel, what God says about you, how he's treating you according to what Jesus has done, not what you do. And when you meditate on that, and that's your focus, that's your, the word or the message that you focus on, then you will likewise be able to like it said earlier, inherit the kingdom of God. You will obtain and walk in these things in the kingdom of God, which is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, self-control, peace, joy, you know, all the fruit of the Spirit. And seeing the things that you are expecting and God has you know, revealed to you, He will do for you restoration, healing, provision, just he wants to be your everything. And it's not based on anything you do or you need to do for him. He all he wants you to do is to make sure you're listening to the right message. Trusting in the right message. And when you trust in the right message, well then the the fruit and the goodness of what God has already provided you in the spirit starts manifesting in the natural. First starting in your soul. I love that verse in 3 John 2 where it says, Beloved, I pray above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So as your soul is prospering, that's the first thing that has to get established is your soul. You could say your personality, your thoughts, your memories, your imaginations, your dreams. They, the, your soul, that's your soul, has to begin prospering first. And then, even as, like that verse says, then you're, you will be in health and prosper outwardly. Amen. That was for free. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, but um, that little funny trail there. So you can know that this is, and we're going to continue this on um, next week too, because I have some more to say about sowing and reaping. The continuation of these um, thoughts, these principles. But just know that when you, when you are sowing the gospel, the message of what Jesus Christ has freely given you in your heart, then you will reap eternal life. But if you don't, if you focus on a different type of message that is not truth, which is in some form or fashion law-based, because that is the only other type of message there is, really. It's either gospel or some other law-based message. And if you're focused on another message that's not the gospel, then you will reap corruption. You know, I mean, that's pretty much, that is pretty much it. <laughs> and then also always be aware that we have a sowing and reaping mentality with people. You know, that's the kind of, we are all connected together and people that aren't walking after the Spirit will many times treat you according to what you do. And if you treat them poorly, like we just read a moment ago, then they will likewise treat you poorly. If you treat them good, they will treat you very well. Or you could possibly be winning them over to the Lord by your good behavior. 
You know, that is a wonderful benefit of walking after the Spirit. You know, you're able, you're able to be generous to unbelievers, irregardless of their poor behavior to you. And in doing that, you are revealing that you are you are manifesting the nature of God that is in you because that is God's nature. It's his nature to give freely. It says for in John, of course, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave. You know, when we are so aware of how much God freely loves us, how much he's sown into our lives in Jesus Christ, Jesus was the seed he sowed into our lives on our behalf he gave you know he gave to us and likewise when we have that mentality we will end up giving effortlessly not because you have to to get something from god but because you want to that's just god's kind of nature amen so i pray that you were encouraged and let me just end i'll end with this one verse here you know we were talking about being uh, reaping eternal life and you know what is this quote-unquote reward that you get according to the labor that you labor according to the gospel in well this is the reward again this is the reward this is the parable of the, t of the talents that Jesus shared and I'm just cutting into one of the um, one of the stewards who came back with a you know with his talent and Jesus was or you could say in the in the well let me just read it this is Matthew 25 21 the Amplified Bible and it says his master said to him well done you upright honorable admirable and faithful servant you have been faithful and trustworthy over a little I will put you in charge of much Enter into and share the joy, the delight, the blessedness which your master enjoys. This is so wonderful. It's so simple and it's so wonderful. You know, if everything here is freely given us, then why do we try and use carnal means like sowing money to reap something spiritual? You know, everything's freely given. So what this, what this person reaped, or you could say their reward, quote unquote, is that they were able to enter in the kind of joy, the blessedness and the delight that God enjoys. And that is, that is true. When you are allowing the gospel to just get rooted in your heart and, and bloom in your life, by the fruit of the, with the fruit of the spirit you are entering into the god kind of life you are experiencing his kind of delight his joy cuz that's that's god's nature that's the nature of the holy spirit god and when you allow yourself to be transformed by the gospel then you, this is your reward that you experience the god kind of life you know, delight and joy, no matter what the circumstances. This is what's so awesome about the fruit of the Spirit. It says in Galatians 5, 23, that there is no law against the fruit of the Spirit. There is nothing that is circumstantial that can overcome the powerful fruit of the Spirit. You can enjoy peace and comfort and goodness, kindness, patience, self-control, joy, you know, I mean, you can experience all the fruit of the Spirit irregardless of what your circumstances may be. That is supernatural life because so many people are in bondage to the state of their circumstances, the state of their family members, the state of their um, finance is the state of you know what they're how they're doing on their job or not you know what their boss thinks about them but you can be independent and separated from the effects of those circumstances 
by the powerful fruit of the Spirit that can manifest in your life as you sow the gospel in your heart. Amen. You will enter in, just like the Master said there, enter in and partner, or you could say share. You are partnered now with God to share in His kind of delight, His kind of joy, His everlasting joy, unspeakable joy. You know, and you just can't put money on that. That is priceless. It really is. Now, people try and buy it out in the world. They try and go on uh, vacations galore. Or, you know, maybe they try and get five different college degrees so that they can just arrive to that place of honor and, and you know, good reputation. You know, they just climb the ladder or just whatever people are trying different means to get this kind of eternal life that only comes from God it's free and it happens when you trust in the right message you sow the right message in your heart amen and i hope that you see the the importance of that or the value is the word i'm thinking the value of that eternal life it sounds almost trite, you know, unimportant maybe. Because, you know, we say grass is living, you know, or my dog is living. <laughs> but I'm not talking about that kind of life. I'm talking about God's kind of life, the life that sustains God. Don't you want to have that kind of life? Well, that happens when you sow the right kind of see the right mentality the right thought and doctrine teachings which is all gospel all about what God has done for you freely in Jesus Christ that's sowing the right seed in your heart and it will manifest eternal life you'll reap eternal life if you do not become weary in your well-doing and of course, when I say that, you're well-doing, I'm talking about you're being focused and you're listening and trusting in the right message, which is all about what Jesus has done for you, not about what you need to do or have done or haven't done for God. Because God's faithful. The focus is on God, not on you. Amen? So I enjoyed sharing this with you today. And I really look forward to sharing the second part next week. So you have a great week and God bless you. Bye-bye.